Hello and welcome back to YouTube studio here at Munich Security Conference. I'm Jack Kelly from TLDR News, and I'm very fortunate to be joined by two fantastic guests for this session. Director of the US National Guard, Michael Lowe, and German Chief of the Air Force, uh, General Ingo Gerhardt. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, okay. It's a really nice to have both of you together here because it's clear over the last year or so, transatlantic relations have become almost stronger than ever. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the last year or so, how transatlantic relations have changed, and also how you think they'll travel into the future as the war in Ukraine concludes. Yeah, thanks, Jake, for, for the question. Um, uh, some, some minutes before we had a, had a panel and um, last year's conference um, when uh, we were kind of like, okay, is he, is Putin invading, um, attacking Ukraine uh, like he did in Crimea 2014? Um, th there were a lot of maybes, kind of like uh, maybe he's attacking or maybe not. Um, and that's, ah, he never going to attack whole Ukraine, kind of. But now we still have maybes left, yeah. but no, never. Um, we, I mean, looking to, to Putin and his aggression, we cannot say he never going to do this and that. Um, and especially um, if you look to NATO, um, we say, okay, this is the red line. Um, you, you should not cross that uh, line. It is so important, our uh, transatlantic alliance. Um, yes, we Europeans have to do more. Yes, we Germans have to do more. But uh, if it comes to, a, to a, a conflict like that, the US, our friends, they make the difference. So um, I'm kind of the same way. We've actually been at this uh, strategic partnership for over seven decades, over 70 years. You know, NATO, the, the founding of NATO, uh, the fall of the Soviet Union, and we kept that, uh, that strength and actually grew NATO. And so when, when you look at it, uh, the German leadership uh, in particular, uh, why I'm over here is to, is to uh, uh, finalize the plans for Air Defender 23. Mm -hmm. And on Air Defender 23, um, German-led exercise that's going to bring together 15 uh, European countries and and the Air National Guard is going to be the largest participant with over 100 U.S. aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, fighters, tankers, mobility aircraft, and we're going to come over here for a two-week exercise. And so that transatlantic partnership is very, very strong. And uh, and when, when I look at it from my perspective, um, I have 108,000 airmen in the Air National Guard mm -hmm. that I'm responsible for. I'm responsible for their organizing, their training, their equipping. And so part of that is also the exercise program. So this is a large readiness exercise for us. It's, it's a transatlantic exercise. It, is, uh, um, it, uh, it comports to our national defense strategy of uh, strategic, uh, deterring strategic attack against our allies and partners, obviously Germany being one of those huge partners and the German leadership that, uh, that Ingo and his team is doing as far as this exercise goes. So it allows us to come over and do that readiness and uh, what we call it in, in the United States is it allow, allows us to do that daily campaigning and integrated deterrence. So ha having, having that part of it is, is pretty huge. But being transatlantic, as you started with, is also big. Yeah. And Ingo, you talked on the kind of German response thus far. At the beginning of the war, um, Chancellor Schultz commented that there was going to be a significant increase in German support militarily. But reports are still suggesting that spending on military uh, issues is still less than 2% target set by NATO. What do you think of the German response thus far? And do you think Europe as a whole is doing enough? I mean, especially looking to Europe, um, we have to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So that was really good um, that we kicked off this 100 billion extra fund. Um, but that's just to, to start with. Um, you know, I have old helicopter aircraft, for example, um, and we needed a new, new fighter aircraft like the F-35, we procured it now. Um, but it, the 100 billion euro can be only the start. Um, and that's why the, the discussion, and uh, he made the pledge yesterday for that um, in his speech, 2% it is. So now we really have to increase it to 2% and we have to get going. Um, and and every, in, in Europe, a lot of countries are looking to Germany um, that, that we take responsibility and that we go forward in terms of building capabilities. Um, and that, like, like Mike uh, just mentioned, I mean, Air Defender 2023, um, that is part of this, okay, you have to take responsibility. 
um, we lead this exercise. I mean, without the U.S. Air National Guard, uh, it wouldn't be a, an exercise where we can deter anybody because they really make the difference with 100 aircraft. Um, but we all, the Europeans together, take another 100 aircraft, so we have more than 200 aircraft involved. Um, and it is organized and, and led by us. And from an American perspective, too, there's a certain amount of division in the United States, clearly, and there's a rise of nationalism in some circles. So do you think that kind of tendency could drive a rift between a more America-focused nation and NATO as a whole? Um, uh, absolutely not. I, I, I look at uh, NATO, our European allies and partners, the support of our European allies and partners, and that's absolute. I mean, that we haven't wavered on that at all, and so especially in the military. So, I mean, we, we have, um, in the National Guard, we're very lucky to have state partnership programs, over 20 of them. We just added another one with Norway uh, coming on board. And so we have long-term, over three decades of enduring relationships throughout, uh, throughout Europe. And those long-term relationships uh, actually help us promote peace and security throughout the region. So I don't, uh, I actually don't see that divide. Mm -hmm. when, 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 you, when you go and engage, you know, in my local communities, uh, the 90 wings that we have um, throughout the United States, uh, they're all talking about security. And so they're engaging the forces on what's going on worldwide and how our military fits into that uh, security posture. It's great to hear. I think on both issues, there's concern among some people that there is a divide, whether it's kind of the economic side of things or the political side of things. And it's encouraging to hear from both perspectives that that is not an issue between the two. But now we prove um, it isn't. Yes. I mean, like a couple of years ago, there uh, was a politician's, uh, politician, he, he mentioned like NATO is brain dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. It isn't. I mean, it's, it's up, and, up and running. Um, and uh, it's important to have the public behind us. Um, and I, I see a big support for public in all of our countries. And, and you just look at what's happening over here in Europe. Yeah. Finland and Sweden now, now joining. Right, mm -hmm. trying to join. And so they're going through the process of making that happen. That's it's huge. It's clear then there's a lot of agreement here, especially regarding Ukraine and the issues with Russia. One other topic that's obviously a big issue is the problems with China and the kind of it concerns there as well. And that's somewhere where we people are discussing another potential divide. Obviously, um, Chancellor Schultz visited Beijing relatively recently, while some in the US are becoming more hawkish on the issues on both sides of the aisle. So what do you make of this tension? In fact, earlier at the conference, Wang Yi, the Chinese foreign minister, suggested that this really was a divide between the two sides going forward. Do you agree with that summary or do you think there's more agreement than some expect? Um, I didn't hear the Chinese perspective. Mm. Our national defense strategy is pretty clear. I mean, our, our, we call it a pacing challenge. Our pacing challenge is China. Yeah. I mean, you look at the rise of where the Chinese, and in particular when I'm looking at the military, I mean, the modernization of their nuclear weapons, the number of nuclear weapons that they have. You know, what is the purpose of that? Uh, their modern aircraft and building out their aircraft and rocket forces and uh, challenging the world order. Mm -hmm. So when you look at what China's been doing, at least militarily, uh, and coercing by force, uh, it makes you pause. Yeah. And so in, in this uncertain world, especially in the United States military, we look at China and Russia Okay. And then, of course, the other axes like uh, Iran and North Korea as being problematic for an international world order. And so for me, uh, we're working on, on how do we recapitalize, just like Ingo's doing, the old fighters, you know, our older aircraft, our older missions into new missions. Mm -hmm. okay. How do we out-innovate the Chinese, which we can do. We, you know, we just have to have that sense of urgency yeah. and out-innovation for our air forces agile combat employment, multi-capable airmen, and doing some of those very, very unique things. And then now, how do we engage in that dialogue and conversation like we're having here? With, uh, with for me, it's the American people, but more importantly, on the international world order. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And for us, um, I mean, we came up with the uh, um, Indo-Pacific strategy um, of the German government a couple of years ago. And uh, last year, for the first time ever, um, the German Air Force deployed to the Indo-Pacific. Um, we flew through an exercise in Australia, um, and I got a lot of questions from, from, from media. Is that a signal against China? I said, it's not a signal against anybody. It's a signal f before, for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, the signal to our friends, to our allies, um, even in the, in the Pacific region and to countries that we are all together. The National Guard, my western edge of the National Guard mm -hmm. is Guam. 
Yes. American territory. So I have forces stationed in Guam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been very nice hearing from both of you. Really appreciate your perspectives sure. on the future of the relationship and what's going on right now. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.